Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Miguel back again with another video. And today I have a phone from a company that's not really talked about a lot. And that's obviously because of the sanctions that it's facing. And I'm talking about the Huawei phones. This is the Huawei Pura 70 Pro. And the Pura is sort of like a new lineup for the Huawei series. And I believe this is the base variant. There's a Pro Plus variant. And then there's an Ultra variant as well, which are obviously more expensive, have better features and better quality. Now, having said that, this is still a really good upper mid-range phone and uh, you can probably even classify this near flagship level. But I want to talk a little bit about the company itself. So if we look at other companies like Xiaomi, if we talk about, talk about Techno, if we talk about Vivo, if we talk about even OnePlus, like all of them kind of fall under one category. And then Huawei is a separate company, Apple is a separate company, Samsung is a separate company. Um, Huawei is one of those companies that if it didn't have the sanctions, I believe it would very much compete in the Western market with a lot of other existing phones that are there right now. And I was looking at some of the reviews for this phone and a lot of people were saying the same thing, that if Huawei didn't have any sanctions, there's a possibility that it would take over the Western market. And I couldn't agree more because this phone is truly different. They're doing things a little bit different, but there's one big disadvantage that falls on Huawei, which obviously I think you guys know by now, but I'll talk about that later on a little bit. Let's go ahead and first look at the phone. So we have the Huawei Pura 70 Pro. You can see that it mentioned it has Kunlun glass protection here. So it's almost like Gorilla Glass, but obviously it's a little bit different. Some people say that it's not as strong as Gorilla Glass, but nevertheless, you're still getting some sort of protection. And you have Explore it on App Gallery, which means that they use their own App Gallery. And again, I'll mention why in a little bit. We have 512 gigs of internal storage, we have 12 gigs of RAM, and then we have the black color. This only comes in two colors, the white and the black one. There's a purple color as well, but I believe that's reserved for the Ultra or the Pro Plus. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. So we have the phone up here, and it's that's a, that's a bit of a hefty phone, uh, I'll tell you that. So we have the SIM pin, we, have, we don't have any paperwork because this is not a unit that's for sale, it's actually a review unit. And we have the uh, hard case with uh, sort of like that uh, naked look. I don't know if you want to call it that, but then you also see this very um, unusual kind of design for the camera bump. And this is something that is, I think, unique because not a lot of people are doing things differently when it comes to the camera bump. A lot of companies are copying each other and kind of making small changes and then doing the same thing over and over again. So I think this is a welcome change. You also have a very heavy, hefty, 100 watt charger that comes out of the box and I like the fact that you have the option to use either a regular USB or USB-C to USB-C and then you also have your USB-C to USB-C cable that's out of the box. Now if we look at the phone, immediately the phone looks familiar in a way that it, it feels like I've used this somewhere and then I thought about it and I thought about the iPhone 10. This has a very very similar feel to the iPhone 10 because this is overall curved and this also has sort of like a shiny finish and even though these sides are made up of aluminum they're actually they have a shiny finish very similar to the way that stainless steel looks on uh, the iPhones and again this is a very I just love the way that it felt in the hand and I think we can all agree on the fact that the iPhone 10 was probably one of the best designed iPhones out there a lot of people really love that phone including myself I held on to that phone for around four to five years. Like I didn't upgrade for nearly that much amount of time. Uh, so we have curved, uh, so, so overall the phone uh, has curved edges, but it also has, has a curved display and a curved back. The back is sort of like a matte color, which I really like because it is prone, it is not prone, sorry, it's not prone to any sort of fingerprints at all. Like you can't even see any smudges or anything like that. Usually with phones that have a matte uh, back or tablets that have a matte black, you'll still be able to see some sort of smudges, but here you can't really tell. And then you have the big camera model with that unusual kind of futuristic design. You have a main 50 megapixel camera, and then you also have a 48 megapixel telephoto lens, and then you have the ultra wide camera, which is a 12.5 megapixel camera and you have your flash over here. Other things, uh, when it comes to the design, you have the, your button placement over here when it comes to the volume, and then you also have your power button here, which also has this kind of like a red highlight inside of it, and I kind of like that, it's, it's a unique look. You also have your stereo speakers down here, very similar to the iPhone. It looks very, very uh, close to that. You also have your USB-C port, your uh, dual SIM tray on this side, and on the left side, 
you pretty much don't have anything apart from the antenna bands. When you look at the display, this is a very pretty looking display. And I like the fact that uh, you have a very minimal bezel. Like there's pretty almost no bezel here whatsoever. You have your punch hole design uh, uh, camera here on the front. And then you also have, as you can probably tell, 120 hertz uh, refresh display. And, and this is an LCPO display, which will go down to one hertz whenever it's needed. So you are saving on power and you are getting the latest technology there. This is a 6.8 inch display and it has a resolution of 1260 by 2844. So you're getting a pixel density of 460 PPI. And then you obviously have your Kundalan Glass 2 protection, which is gonna give you, according to Huawei, 100% more advantage as to the previous one. So I don't know the previous ones, I don't know what they're comparing that to, but according to what it says on their website, it's 100 times 100% more uh, protective than the previous one. Now this comes with 12 gigs of RAM and if we look at the performance, this comes with Kirin's 9010 chipset, which is a chipset that's based on a seven nanometer platform. Looking at the numbers, this is sort of a, uh, kind of like the, in the middle, like it's not too high, it's not too low. Uh, I wish that it was a little bit better, especially considering the price of this phone and that's probably the biggest problem that I have with this phone is the price. And just keep that in mind, keep these numbers in mind, keep the features in mind. And by the end of the video, when I tell you the price, you guys are gonna be a little bit shocked. So this is 663,000 points, which again is not the best. It's sort of like in the middle. Um, and uh, um, you know, that's, that's one thing that I kind of didn't like about this phone. And then the other thing that I was mentioning about uh, the Huawei phones, and this, this is across the board on any Huawei devices that you don't get Android services, you don't, you don't get any sort of Google services. They have their own in-house app gallery, which is supposed to give you similar apps to what Google does, but it's not Google, it's not Android. So that's a big part that's gonna play on your conscience when you are gonna be buying a Huawei phone is that you know, you're gonna to have to sacrifice on those things and it's not gonna be able to sync up with a lot of other of your products that are using Google or Android. So that's, that's a big um, negative in my opinion. It's still, I mean, this phone is available in the UAE. We have an official showroom for Huawei here that uh, people are going and, and buying phones from. I, I, don't, I don't get the mentality of people who buy Huawei phones. I mean, I know that they're different. And, and as, as, as I said, this is a phone that will, is truly a different phone from every other Android phone out there. But I mean, the lack of Google services is sort of like a, just a dead giveaway that no, I'm not gonna buy this phone. So, so I kind of struggle to understand that concept. Now, this phone, as I said, is a sort of like a mid-range phone, but it's also a very good camera phone because you have a pretty good setup and Huawei claims that it has an ultra speed snapshot uh, camera setup, which means that you can take photos of fast moving objects. And we tried to test that theory and it didn't go as planned like i i couldn't tell whether it was working or not we we took a bunch of photos trying to shuffle a deck of cars and see if it captured that we tried to look at passing cars it, it sort of still didn't give us that ultra fast uh snapshot that huawei claimed to give us nevertheless the camera's uh, setup is is pretty good um you have a 15 megapixel camera and then you also have a 48 megapixel telephoto lens, which uh, according to here, if I go ahead and, and start zooming, then it gives me up to 100 times um, of digital zoom. And I think this just goes up to 3.5 times optical zoom. So that's one of the things that you have to keep in mind. You also have your ultra wide camera over here, which is gonna provide you 12.5 megapixels. And um, this also does take night for photography and does, does a pretty good job at that because it has an aperture of 1.3 F, so it opens up pretty wide and it's pretty good when, take, when taking night photography. One of the things that I didn't like is, again, the front-facing camera. It kind of has that beauty effect, and even though I turned it off, it kind of still has that effect, and I, I don't, I'm not a big fan. If you guys can tell by now, in every video, I pretty much discuss that, and um, it's, it's sort of okay, but it still kind of gives you that soft look, which which I don't like. Battery wise, uh, this has a pretty big battery and uh, well, not pretty big, but it's a little bit bigger than average. And uh, if we look at it, it has a 5,050 milliampere battery, which is supposed to provide you around 13 to 14 hours of uh, general use every day. And then you also have your 100 watt fast charger that comes out of the box. Now this will charge your phone from zero to, 100, to, zero to 50% in 15 minutes and then around 30 minutes for zero to 100%. 
I thought it was a bit slow considering that you're getting a 100 watt charger, but I guess that's just the way that it's designed. It may have to do with protecting the battery because phones that charge way too fast are also degenerating the battery and it heats up if, if, and that's not really good for the battery. This also has an 80 watt wireless charging. Uh, so 80 watts is, is uh, not heard of uh, really. It's, it's not really that common. But there's one more thing, and that's that it also has reverse wireless charging up to 20 watts. So that's pretty good as well. Normally, you get around 20 to 30 watts of uh, wireless charging, but this has reverse wireless charging of up to 20 watts, 80 watts wireless charging, and then 100 watts wired charging. Now, last but not least, if we talk about the price, now that's where it does, I, I don't really get the point, because this will cost you 3,999 dirhams. Now, that is iPhone territory. Like, you can get an iPhone 15 for that price. If you translate that to dollars, that's just a little bit over a thousand dollars. So you are already touching iPhone territory. You're touching flagship category. And this phone is not a flagship. I mean, especially if you look at the chipset, it's not really where it has to be to kind of be classified as a flagship phone. If you look at the camera, it's okay, but it's not the best camera that I've seen. Um, there are far better cameras that I've seen on phones that cost less than this. So um, that's probably one of my biggest problems and I just, I just don't get the pricing convention when it comes to Huawei phones. And this is the base model, like there is the Pro Plus and then there is the Ultra models which are touching 5,000 dirhams and maybe even above that. So I just don't get the, the point of that. Like this iPhone 15 Pro Max cost me uh, a little bit over $1,000. Um, actually a little bit less than that because I bought it on sale. Uh, that, that's where my problem is and th that's my review. And I'm not saying that this is a bad phone in any way, but I just don't get the point of buying a phone that cost over an, uh, over $1,000 um, and uh, doesn't have Google services, doesn't really have Android services. And uh, you know, it's not even the best flagship camera out there. Like it's a sort of like an upper mid range phone and pretty much that's it. So that's my review on the Huawei Pura 70 Pro. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.